November 11th is Veterans Day, a momentous day in American history, and we have a special program to mark it. 100 years ago today, the First World War ended. The U.S. joined the fight toward the end of the war, but played a crucial role. For our cover story this week, we revisit a decisive moment that took place in the countryside of northern France, where they still remember great American heroism and sacrifice. This isn't a history lesson. It's the story of an unbreakable bond between France and the United States, told through letters written by heroes. January 7, 1918. Dear Mary, we arrived, as you know, safely in France, and the night of my arrival, we spent unloading our stores. The 100-year-old stories extend from a French cemetery an hour outside of Paris, where U.S. soldiers are buried, to Boston, Massachusetts, 3,000 miles away. We traveled in freight cars with no heat, and there were three nights and two days on the way. We all stood the journey nicely and are now billeted in two little French towns. It has been very cold for the last days, but today it is raining hard. Sisters Carolyn and Diana are the granddaughters of U.S. Marine Major Edward Cole, who wrote from the battlefield in France to his wife back home in Boston, the letters preserved by their mother. My mother, being an excellent archivist, decided she would put them together in a book it was about his life interspersed with the letters. She wove them together in a beautiful combination. So she made a very moving statement about him and about his life and through his letters. Major Cole ended up fighting in a defining engagement for America in World War I, the legendary Battle of Bella Wood. April 6, 1918. Dear Mary, since I last wrote you, Fritz got a little lively so we have moved our camp a bit. He got to strafing us with nine-inch shells, which are uncomfortable bedfellows if one slips in through the roof. The Battle of Bella Wood unfolded over three bloody weeks in the summer of 1918, with the relatively untested U.S. Marines facing German troops with years of battle experience. This is basically where the Marines crossed uh, into the actual woods of Bella on June 6, 1918. We met two recently retired Marines at Bella Wood, Sergeant Major William Fry on the right and Gunnery Sergeant Jason Weed wearing the hat. The French were having no luck in driving back the Germans, is that true? That's correct. And the Germans were on their way to Paris? Right. The Marines were assigned to stop a breakout by the Germans who were dug into the woods with a new form of weapon, machine guns. The Marines actually walked across the basically walked across in formation across the wheat fields in open, in open daylight, as you see right now. And it wasn't until probably about 500 meters out uh, the machine guns opened up and just started just going back and forth, just taking them down and just mowing down the wheat fields. The Germans waited until they got close. Correct. They waited. And uh, for, for a while, the Marines thought this was going to be, no, there's nothing in there. You know, it's going to be a pretty easy day. And then uh, the Germans, they, they waited for them to come right across that, that crest right there and open up fire. It took the Marines multiple bloody advances over several weeks before they were able to drive out the Germans, preventing a direct attack on Paris. The U.S. lost more than 1,800 men. Marines in Bella Wood, it definitely defined us as who we are today. Um, the warrior ethic, the, the warrior spirit, um, Definitely there's not a Marine that's dead or alive today uh, from 1918 till now that doesn't know the price and the significance of uh, what our brothers that fought here have done. A gift for the Marine. You're a no, Marine? I am a Marine. Okay. We found that sacrifice still remembered today by French locals around Bella Wood, which remains scarred with trenches and littered with artillery and ammunition. A stock of bullets. Jean Scohi still finds bullets and shells on his property. Without the Americans, he says, he'd be speaking a different language. Because we, we uh, speak uh, German uh, fluently now, I think, <laughs> I think. A measure of just how enduring the U.S.-French connection has grown since the battle, when French President Emmanuel Macron recently visited Washington, he gave President Trump a tree to plant on the White House lawn. The sapling is from Bella Wood. 
Back in France, a short distance from the battlefield, is a well-kept cemetery that's the last resting place for some of the German enemy who fought here. They, too, are remembered through letters and battlefield reports recounting the aggression and bravery of the U.S. Marines. Only a few of the men are genuine Americans by ancestry. The majority is German, Dutch or Italian parentage. But these half-Americans, who with a few exceptions were born in America and who never before have been in France, consider themselves unhesitatingly genuine sons of America. More than 2,000 American soldiers are buried here at a cemetery at the foot of Bella Wood overseen by Navy veteran Jim Bertelson. These grounds are beautifully manicured, flowers, trees, birds, wildlife. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It's easy to forget that there was so much horror going on here. I agree with you. This is, this is a beautiful setting, and it takes a great deal of work to keep it beautiful. But if I had had my choice, I would have had you guys march all night a good 30 miles in the rain, get here tired, and then do the interview, uh, because that's what these men did. But um, most of them were killed or injured afterwards. So uh, that's the problem with a, a site that's so beautiful. It doesn't convey uh, the context and the enormity of their sacrifice. Also buried here, Carolyn and Diana's grandfather, Major Cole. On June 10th, during the Battle of Bella Wood, he was mortally wounded as he tried to throw back a German grenade. He died eight days later on June 18th, 1918. He was 38 years old. You can tell from his letters that he cared very much about his family. So that he's dedicated himself to the values he felt were important and that he would go to fight for the values he felt were important and knowing that he was risking and he knew it. May 6, 1918. Dear Mary, I have been in danger many times in the past month, dear, and I'm going shortly where it is very likely that I shall not return. If I should not, my dear wife, remember that I go from this world with nothing in my heart for you but love. More than four and a half million Americans served during World War I. 116,000 died or were killed in battle, and 200,000 were wounded.